Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I have a very special guest back again, Kate Nui. She's one of my friends and I just respect her so much specifically in her ability to bring the practical and the spiritual together. And she has really interesting history, which we can talk about. We've also done a couple other videos with her, which I'll have in the description. Um, so you can see those too. But today we're going to talk about the cyclical aspect of the feminine and how we can work with this specifically in relation to, you know, the very common feeling of being burnt out, whether it's from external world situations that are happening, whether it's just from having so much on our plate as humans and women today. Um, so we're going to talk about a variety of things within that conversation, but welcome Kate to my channel again. I'm so happy to have you back. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited to talk about this topic because I think this is such an important topic that nobody really thinks about. We've been trained to believe when we're children that we can be anything and everything, which we can, but then we're putting this little device where we only have to act one way and we're just like these robots. And as women, we interact and weave through cycles so much. And so doing things one way does not work for us. And at least like what you say, to burnout, to overwhelm, to exhaustion, to questioning our life, to, you know, feeling taken down by these world events. And so when we can start to see patterns and start to live in a way that really represents that cyclical nature, we open ourselves up to so much freedom and to this new source of energy in our body to really come home to who we are. Beautiful. Do you want to introduce yourself real quick, Kate? <laughs> sure. I'll introduce myself. She has a very interesting background. So I want to just first like name this so that people can understand more of your background and just who you be in the world. Yeah. So I, I wear many hats. Um, I think I'm a student of life, which is why I have so many hats. I started off on this journey with this curiosity in my body of how I could heal it. I was going through fertility issues. I was having multiple ectopic pregnancies, um, which were leading to losses and really questioning what the hell was happening in my body. And the medical world really failed me. The medical world just wanted to remove body parts and there was no options. There was no information. And this is where like something internal went on in my, my body, which was like, there's got to be more, there's got to be an answer for this. There's got to be a way to heal. And I came from a small town. I was not taught about alternative medicine. I was not taught about spirituality. Like I, I just was really disconnected from my body, but there was something being told that my body was broken, that something opened up, something lit up and was like, no, there's got to be a better way. And I went on this quest of trying to discover how to heal my body. And in that journey, I learned so much about the menstrual cycle, about our hormones, about our body and how amazing it is that it really did 360 in my life. And I went from working a corporate job to all of a sudden becoming a certified yoga therapist and an energy healer and a womb healer to finding all these really amazing teachers around the world. And so I used to work a lot with fertility patients, but now that I'm in my 40s, I'm in perimenopause and everything's switching again, just like how the journey into trying to build a family, into trying to discover my fertility had led me down the path that it has. Now going into perimenopause, it's awakened a different archetype within my system, which has now started to get me questioning about my hormones at this age, what's happening, what's happening during this transition as my body's trying to prepare for menopause. And it's been a wild ride in some ways and not in the way people expect. I think some people think when they hear menopause of hot flashes and so forth, for me, it's really a bit about this discernment, this discernment of life, of what am I doing with my career? What am I doing in my marriage? What am I doing as a parent? Asking these bigger questions and really going, but what about me? what what does Kate get in this? And so I am a certified menstrual cycle coach as well. 
And so I incorporate all these things. I incorporate movement and nervous system regulation and menstrual cycle awareness and hormone education. And in particularly, I combine those all together to really create uh, an environment or a tool for women to learn how to cycle sync or to hormone hack their life. So that way, when we are feeling all these things, these overwhelm feelings or these pressures or just being taken down by life, that we can tune back into our body, ask the bigger questions, and then have resources to come back into balance. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So what I really appreciate about what Kate does is that so much of the conversation for me, at least around hormones and even around like, okay, we've probably heard that the feminine operates cyclically, the masculine operates more from a linear perspective, right? All humans operate cyclically, but from a biological perspective, but then sometimes it's like, okay, but how do I actually implement this? Like I understand from a larger standpoint, I'm cyclical. What does that mean? How do I actually implement that in my life? And um, one of Kate's real specialties is working with the menstrual cycle particularly, but of course she just mentioned bringing in all of these other modalities as well. So what would you say for someone is like one of the beginning steps when you're starting to learn how to lead a cyclical life? What are some of the practical things that someone could start doing that you think are most beneficial? Well, if you are still bleeding, so if you have a cycle, it doesn't matter if it's irregular. What I would say is first thing is start to learn how to chart your cycle. And there's a lot of information out there around charting your cycle. A lot of what you'll read or hear when you Google charting cycle is going to come up with temperature, cervical mucus. It's going to come up with these biomarkers of how to identify where we are in our menstrual cycle. And the menstrual cycle is the full, like from the start of our bleed to when our next bleed happens, right? Now, what I like to teach women, I think that's really great. If we are dealing with kind of health issues, thyroid issues, or we're having painful periods, and we're really trying to dissect to understand our body, then yeah, biomarkers are a great thing to track. But what I'm more excited about teaching women how to do is how to tap into the other bodies. So tapping in, how, how do I feel physically? How do I feel emotionally, mentally, spiritually in my body? And then charting that to see how that changes and fluctuates into four different versions. Because we are four different women throughout the cycle. With each set of hormones that we experience, with each of these four phases of our cycle, we show up differently. Our needs are different. Our expectations are different. How we react or how we take in information is different. And so when we can start to start to see this pattern and start to see this rhythm in our body, we're really creating an instruction manual of how we operate. And the beautiful thing is, is that this starts at puberty with our first bleed and we just build on it every cycle, every month of our life until we hit menopause. And I know there's this concern about like, well, at menopause, now I no longer bleed. How do I track this? This becomes so ingrained in a felt sense in our body that we can still feel that without this biomarker of our bleed. We can feel these four shifts. We can feel these four versions of ourselves. And I feel like when we tap into this, when we tap into the felt sense of something, that we start to understand ourselves differently, to have more self-compassion, to really set ourselves up for success. And to really live the fullest life that we possibly can, because we're now living in a rhythmic nature that mimics what our body's needs and desires are. And so when I talk about the bodies, the physical body, most of us can relate to. We know when we have aches or pains, we have sore breasts, we have period pain, we have ovulation pain, we have no pain. <laughs> like we, we can tap into that pain body pretty quickly. Like we know those physical symptoms. But it's a lot harder for us to sometimes identify and tap into the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual bodies. And it, I think that's where the juicy stuff begins to happen is that when we start to see that we change in our emotions, we change in how we react, we change in our thought processes, and all of that impacts our nervous system. And then it goes into that bigger question of, of spiritually, like how, how do we tend to ourselves as these four different versions? These four different archetypes require something a little bit different or desire something a little bit different. And so it's like meeting those needs. 
And I guess like a really prime example, and we were talking about this just before we hopped on here. Today I woke up and I was like, I knew without even looking at a calendar that I had hit ovulation. I knew that because I woke up to a really nice dream <laughs> that I had last night. I woke up seeing cervical mucus. I woke up and I was playful with my kids. Like I, I came out and went downstairs to start making breakfast and we were laughing and joking and bear hugs. You know, I made the time to hug my husband versus just ignoring him first thing in the morning. Like there's all these touch points. And I think sometimes when we learn about this clinically or like through the scientific lens, we just see it as like, this is anatomically what's happening in our body. Ovulation is meant because there's an egg that's being released and we have a higher sex drive. It's not just a higher sex drive. It's this deep desire to connect with people. I was excited all morning about jumping on this call because I was going to be connecting with you. I was going to be able to be expressive and be in this pleasure state of talking about what I'm passionate about, right? Now, if you would have hit me like two weeks later, I would have probably been a little bit exhausted. I would have shown up, but I've been like, what's that word I'm looking for? <laughs> I probably would have left with like a little bit of a beaten self-esteem going, you know, damn it, I could have done better. Like, why didn't I think of that? Or why didn't I add it in that? Like the energy is just not there. And so like, there's something really beautiful that when we can tap into this, we can just set ourselves up to be in our fullest version of who we are and create space to really appreciate that person. I love this whole conversation. And it just, it reminds me, I don't know if you guys watching, if you've seen the, like, there's like a series of memes, like the theme is, you know, before, before you start certain phases as women, sometimes we'll be like, everything is horrible. Nothing is going right. Not any particular thing is going right. I should just, you know, it's all over. <laughs> like Nothing I do with that. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm about to start to my bleed. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm at this certain phase. And so um, that's maybe one thing that you might relate to that Kate's talking about here with these four different aspects of ourself of like, oh, I, I can recognize in that moment that this is just the phase hormonally that's happening in my body. And, you know, the, the, um, the meme that goes around is like still after, you know, 20 years of having a period, sometimes I still don't remember that this just means I'm about to get my moon. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this is the funny thing is that like, okay, so we have these cycles and we're talking about it in this sense of like this repeating cycle that will happen with your menstrual cycle, which is once a month, once every six weeks, whatever your, your rhythm might be. But we have a life cycle as well. And our menstrual cycle will shift and change depending on our life cycle. And they all match each other. And I know this might be like, what is she talking about? But like how you're talking about these memes. Just last night, my girlfriend sent me a meme on Instagram, which was like this say, it was saying what we thought we'd be like before perimenopause. And it's like this mom who's singing to children and hugging them all on the bed and reading them stories. And then it's like, but what we actually are during perimenopause and it's uh, Judge Judy and she's screaming at them saying, <laughs> shut up, shut up. And I was like, were you at my dinner table tonight? Because that's what I felt like was happening in my house. But this is the thing is that perimenopause mimics our luteal phase, which is our PMS phase, which is the phase before our cycle. And we, this part of our life, like perimenopause and PMS, they get a bad rap. They're like, this is her, I don't know if I can swear on here, but her cranky time of the year, of the cycle, right? Like this is where you're not your best self. This is your best self. Cause you know what? This is where discernment is so strong. This is where you question everything. This is where you are doing life for you and not for others. So like in that meme, the first example that they were showing of this like perfect mother, yeah, that's in our mothering years or what I also call as our empress years, like the before we hit 40, like in that prime range of like 25 to, to probably 40, where we are like career driven. We just see opportunity. We just like, we want to grab life by the horns and do everything and that's because that's the life cycle and it mimics ovulation, right? And so then we go into this next phase. It's like, well, how do I navigate this without feeling like I'm a horrible person or without divorcing my partner or without feeling like I'm blowing up my life, you know? And that's been a lot of this past year for me of just like looking at everything I was doing career-wise, everything and going, does this really serve me? No. 
okay, it's out. <laughs> what is it going to fill? I don't know, but I'm trusting that whatever needs to be will be. And this is how my new program cyclical came into being was because I really got clear with what am I doing? What do I not want to do anymore? What am I teaching? What am I presenting? What am I putting out into the world? None of it felt aligned anymore. So I literally redid my whole business in one year. And I took like four months off in that year because I went into a collapse where I just was like, I know something bigger is happening. And this is kind of like that spiritual self that we talk about sometimes. I knew there was a big upgrade happening. And in order for that upgrade to happen, I had to let go, mourn, be in this place of like stillness, I guess, and reflection. And then out of it, so much beauty came. And I don't think we're taught this in our life of how can we really, how can we look at what's impacting us and then take that reflection moment, which mimics menstruation, right? And, and, and how can we use that momentum to come into our next cycle, into the next part of that's being? And this is the beautiful thing as women, like we are so marinated in cycles that when we start to understand just even our monthly cycle, we can feel that in the bigger rhythms all around us. We can feel that in our life cycle. We can feel that in the seasonal cycles. We can feel that in the moon cycles. Like there's so many ways that we can tap into how we're feeling and start to match that with the appropriate or the nourishing I want to call them tasks, but it's like the nourishing self-care, right? How can we really tend to ourselves so that we're not lost? We're not this person who's like, what is my purpose? I, I, I envisioned my life looking like this and now I'm this. How do I get back to what I envisioned? And how we get back to how we envision is by understanding where we are cyclically in our life and starting to nourish that in maybe out of the box ways that we never thought were possible. Mm-hmm. And all of this, I just like, cause this is what I always talk about. I want to bring this in real quick. <laughs> like, This is all how the matriarchal societies would have operated where we were all understanding these cycles. And I think what happens for a lot of women, when we start to recognize the cycles is the first time we move through some of them, there's this like resistance because we've been trained to be linear. Oh, we're supposed to operate the exact same way as men. We're supposed to operate this way. So it's wrong for me, for example, to take time off work to just be in the stillness, or it's wrong for me to do whatever, because we've been trained that we're not like, that no one does that. Like, what do you mean? But then when we let ourselves have that space and work with the cyclical nature it's like everything starts to make more sense and we can see the, not even just the sacredness, but we can also see the power that is reclaimed and restored when we allow ourselves to go through those cycles. Like what you were just saying, how you, you know, we're feeling like, okay, things are a little bit off. I want to shift some things around within my business in this example, or maybe it's for you guys watching a different area of life. You're like, it just doesn't feel right. I'm not really sure. This is also another, this is something I used to teach in a mastermind I did called initiation, where we moved between six different cycles, you know, destruction and preservation, and then going into the void and then the rebirth and the creation. And when we let ourselves have that space moving through these like much bigger cycles that are outside of our own personal body that are energetic and cosmic and universal, when we let ourselves really like surrender into that then we're able to like squeeze the juice out of each of those phases. Like the void, that stillness you were just talking about. This one is the one that I see most women really resistant mm -hmm. to because we're like, no, I'm supposed to be doing something. Like my worth is in my productivity. Mm -hmm. I'm worthless if I'm not contributing or if I'm not caring for someone. Like if I'm just being still and not doing anything, if my mind is still, if I'm not creating something, I'm, I'm have no worth on the planet. You know, that's what a lot of us like are, are deeply rooted beliefs are. So when we're in that space of stillness and we can just let ourselves succumb to that part of the cycle or whatever part of the cycle, there's so much gift and magic. And then like in the example you just gave, you gave yourself that stillness and space and it's like, Oh, here's the, here's exactly how I want to do it. Yeah. Whereas before it's like, I don't know, what is it going to look like? You know, and there can be this kind of confusion or like, 
or even the question of like, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? This doesn't feel right, but I don't know what does feel right yet. And mm -hmm. like each phase of the cycle is so important. So I like how you're talking about uh, there's, there's cycles on so many different levels and learning how to operate with the most tangible cycles that are actually within our body that we can feel on a real physical level that starts to show us how to handle the other cycles and how to work with them instead of trying to be something that we're not that, you know, the patriarchy that our society has said, no, you're supposed to operate this way, like these other people, but it's detrimental well, to women. And here's the thing is that we've been led to believe that we live a linear life, that you do A to get B. But the reality is, is that there is no linear really in our world. The circadian rhythm runs on a 24 hour clock. It is a cycle, right? And so we think like we're working nine to five and it's like, no, when you think about it, we're waking up in the morning, we're getting ready for the day, we're getting ourselves to work. This is like very similar to the follicular energy of that first part of our cycle before ovulation. And then we get into lunchtime where, you know, we're hungry, we fill the body, we feel the body. And then all of a sudden, usually we're a little creative. We don't want to sit at still. We don't want to sit at our desk and type. We want to get up and move the body and talk to people and interact. This is ovulation energy. And then we go into after work to, you know, mid evening, like late evening, this is our luteal phase, our PMS phase. This is where often we just want to sit on the couch and watch Netflix. We don't want to do things like we're just exhausted or we need to downregulate from our day at work or whatever our excuse might be. But this is where we're like winding down and then we sleep, right? That is our menstruation. So even in this masculine world, even in this world that we see as linear, that we've been told is linear, it really is cycles, right? We we start the day, we do something, we don't finish the project, we leave work, we come back the next day and we finish it because we're in another cycle of a day, right? And so this is the beauty is that we can start to see how even the rhythm of the clock mimics that of the menstrual cycle, mimics that of the environmental seasons, mimics that of the life cycle. And then we can use that for our advantage. Like if we're really feeling burnt out after lunch, it's like, well, what am I needing, right? Why am I feeling this drop in energy? How can I boost myself up? I use this for even managing my own money, <laughs> as funny as that might sound. But I know that there's a time to look at my bank account where I'm not going to feel like, crap, what the hell happened there, right? <laughs> like, If I look at my bank statements and I like to check in, I want to see what's happening in my account. I want to see what's happening with my money. It's a really good practice to come into relationship with your money. But I like to do that stuff first thing in the morning because I'm hopeful. I'm excited. I, I like to send out my emails in the morning. I like to do those things that are like productive in the morning. I don't do them before bed because then it's going to spear my head into thinking about all the negativity. I'm going to go into the, like that self-doubt and that fear, which really does play into a lot of that, that stuff that happens in our luteal phase or our PMS phase or our perimenopause phase or the fall, right? Where we're discerning. And so, you know, just starting to look at your practices of like when you're doing things throughout the day, is it the most optimal time? This is how cycles all play within us. And this is how we can, we can really biohack our life by understanding cycles and understanding how things impact us. Yeah. And I'm remembering we talked about something I want to bring in real quick in our other video that we did, which I'll, I'll tag it up here so you guys can watch it because that one was really good, um, specifically about periods and just, there was a bunch of gems in there. People like loved that video. So you guys should watch it. Um, if thinking about like biohacking our life with these cycles, one of the things that we talked about was even the conversation of working while we're menstruating. And I had a friend who showed me this job description once and she she was like, look, they offer paid menstrual leave. Mm -hmm. And so you're paid, you don't have to come into work, you don't even have to work while you're on your moon. And I was like, wow, this is the way of the future. And we can incorporate, we talked about this a little in the other video, so we don't have to talk about it too much here, but starting to create change in society as it is now by having the bravery to ask for these things by first recognizing, huh, okay, maybe for me, it's not helpful to work while I'm on my period. Or for me, maybe it's not how I know that for my own personal cycle, I can't sit for eight hours, but it's better for me to work 
like just for me, for example, I prefer to work seven days, but it's like three hours a day or four hours a day or whenever I feel called to. And the same amount of work gets done as if I was to try to fit it, fit eight hours a day into Monday to Friday. I wouldn't, I would get 1% as much done. <laughs> yeah. So how can we have the self-awareness and start to kind of train ourselves to look at these cyclical patterns so that we can learn how to make things work more effectively for us. And this is also something Kate's going to be talking about in her program, Cyclical, um, mm -hmm. which we can talk about as well. And I'll have the link here if you guys want to check it out. It's starting soon. But that's how you can really bring in like these practical elements to learn how to work with these cycles that govern everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, how do we do that? We have to track our cycle. We have to know how we feel right? Like we can't change something. We can't set new policies and procedures if we don't know how we're operating. And so we first have to learn who we are and what our system is. And that system is completely unique to you, just like your DNA is, right? And so for some people, it's going to be a 21 day cycle. For some, it's going to be a 30 day cycle. For some people, they're going to spend a little bit longer in a phase than in the other phase. But this is where you start to know your rhythm. I know day five, I'm like, renewed energy, like, let's go, let's do it all. And I usually, I mean, even though I've been doing this work for so many years, I do it every cycle. As soon as day <laughs> five happens, I feel this like pulsation of energy and I go. And then day six and seven, I feel like a bag of crap. And it's because <laughs> I didn't move with ease. I didn't like be like, wow, this is beautiful energy. No, instead how my brain has been trained, how we have been trained in society. I'm like productivity, let's hustle, let's do all the things. And, you know, I always joke that it kind of almost sometimes feels like, well, at least where I live, I'm in Canada. So we have cold winters here. Like <laughs> we freeze here for half of the year, but there's this thing, as soon as the snow melts and the sun is nice and bright and our days get a little bit longer and we see some green grass, we're like, yay, summer's here. And then we go out in shorts with no jacket and Tom shoes and it's freezing outside <laughs> because <laughs> we're still in spring, right? And this is kind of what I do on day five is I see so much light, so much possibility. I just jump head first in and I don't pace myself. And a part of our first half of our cycle is really about like slowly easing back into things. Like think about what you need set up the procedure so that you don't burn out, right? Like know what it is that's going to tax you too much. And so I'm aware of it. And I often know, like I have to either talk myself down of doing too much, or I just know that day six is going to be a little bit of a rough one. Day 19, guaranteed, I am waking up and I am mad at the world. And I'm not even sure why I'm mad at the world. <laughs> like I just wake up and everyone's to blame for everything. And it's just, it's really funny now. Cause even in my relationship, I just like day 19, day 19. <laughs> like, that's all I have to say. And everyone gets what that means. My kids understand when I say that I'm in my inner fall, we use my cycle as seasons. Right. And so I'll be like, I'm in my inner fall. Mommy's tired. She can't handle noise. Right. And the kids get it. They know it because we talk about it. And this is the beauty of knowing your cycle is that it always starts where you're, you feel the safest, right? And for me, feeling the safest, it started with my kids. It started talking to them about what my needs were. It was also about setting myself up for success with them of knowing like, I'm not going to do craft hour in my inner fall or my luteal phase because all that stuff is going to stress me out. The cut pieces of paper, the sparkles, the glue, all of it is going to like just aggravate me and I'm not going to be a nice mom. That's something to do in the first half of my cycle. Let's do that on day five when I feel like superhuman, right? And so like knowing how to create my own expectations, but then also knowing to communicate my needs with my kids. And then it started with my husband. We talk about my cycle all the time and not in the way that it's like dissecting it for like biology, it is for him to have a clearer picture of where I'm at and he knows it. And he's able to talk to me in a way that I can relate to depending on where I'm at. Right. Um, like even just last night we were joking and laughing. He's like, you're coming up to ovulation. Like, I just know it. Like you're way too nice right now. <laughs> we know you're approaching ovulation. And so like, this is something that we can joke about and we laugh at it. I'm like, maybe. Um, but then he also knows like when I'm in my luteal phase, when I'm in that, that PMS phase, he has said to me, and I appreciate it so much. And I love that he has a dialogue to say to me. He's like, you're talking to me like I'm a child. 
And I know that it's where you're at in your cycle, but it's not serving either of us. And then I'm just like, whoa, you know, you're actually right. I'm not being very kind with my words. And it is about my tone. It's not even what I'm saying. It's the tone that I'm using to you. I'm being very condescending. And it gives me the cue that I need to step away. And we both know, like in that moment when he calls me out on it, it's like, okay, I'm going upstairs. And he's like, yes, you go take some time for yourself. Because it's not because I am picked a fight and I'm walking away. It's that he's like, you need some you time because you're not being nice to any of us. <laughs> so like, but this is just it. Like, this is how you create health in relationships. And then from there, that's when you can take it out to the workplace, right? Like, I am not afraid to tell people that I can't do certain things because of where I'm at in my cycle. I'm totally okay of saying, you know what, give me a minute. I've got to check my schedule and check my cycle where I'll be at before I commit to that. And this is the way of the future. This is the way that we can start talking about these things and start changing the expectations that sometimes the world puts on us, but sometimes we put on ourselves and not to our fault. This is the way we've been trained and it's retraining it. And this isn't just for you. This is for our youth. My girls are going to have a very different life than what I have because of how they've been raised in this cyclical culture in our home right? They will understand that things are different. They already do. They know that they're not supposed to be the same person every day. And that's okay. And my, my daughter, it's so funny. She's not in puberty yet, but sometimes she's like, I think this is just my puberty today. I just, I just got to go take some time for me. I'm like, totally, you go take time for you then. Right? Like, so she doesn't know what, what's going on. She just knows that there's this word and this, this might be it because it feels very different in her body. And I'm like, great. You labeled it with something. You know that you don't feel your normal self and you know how to ask for what you need. Good on you. Now go do that. Right. And so this is how we create a healthier society. Yeah. Can we just imagine all little girls being taught this? Probably every single one of us learning this, maybe outside of a couple. I didn't learn anything about my period other than here's how to use a tampon. Like, <laughs> I didn't learn anything about it until the last seven or eight years, probably about the cyclical nature and how we care for ourselves through hygienic products and, and hormonal products and all these things and things we should avoid and all that sort of thing, which we talked about that in our last video. So you guys, I'll yeah. put it up here if you want to watch it, but a child learning that at a young age through the modeling of the parent is so, so pivotal. And as we're learning how to, I just want to say this, like for all women, sometimes it can feel like, well, you know, what's just me doing this really going to do, you know, just me learning this by myself, isn't going to change things, but that's not accurate. As each of us learn this, it creates a wave of momentum. Then as the brave ones, we step into our bravery and ask our boss, Hey, I actually can't, you know, we, we set our boundaries of whatever, when all women are doing that, it completely changes the entire sphere of the workplace, of relationships, of what we're expected to do. Even you could even say like of the price of hyg feminine hygienic products, of how we're treated mm -hmm. in hospitals, like all these sorts of things. It changes mm -hmm. everything. It just takes us to be able to take the time to learn a new system, which mm -hmm. if you've ever been in like a corporation, when you learn, when they're like, okay, we're using a new software and everyone's like, ah, I don't, it's going to take so much time. Let's just use the old one. It won't be as productive, but we'll save however much time learning the new one. And we have to think this new, the us learning about these cycles is the most effective for women. It's mm -hmm. so much more fulfilling. It's so much more nourishing. It feels so much better if we can just take the time, even in little chunks, even watching videos like this or going more deep in like, okay, I'm just, I just want to learn some of these practical tools and doing a program like Kate's or working with her in, in any sort of capacity, learning these practical ways, specifically with our bodies, that we mm -hmm. can really be learning how to understand ourselves at a different level. <clears throat> that is how major change happens. And it starts with each of us individually. So, well, yeah. And two things to add to that. First being that I think for a lot of us, the reason why this feels awkward or uncomfortable is because it feels unsafe. And that's where we have to start to play with this in safe containers, like I said, with my family and then taking it outwards. But we have to start playing with this, even with just ourselves of just like, what what's going on? 
Because when we start to register that this is safe, then our nervous system reacts differently. And then our thoughts change. And then our actions change. And our behaviors change. And so it all starts with safety. And you know, people that work for my husband, it's mainly a male dominate, but he has two women that work with him and they know what I do. And they're not afraid to tell him that they have menstrual pain. They're not afraid to talk to him about things because they know that he's safe because he has to deal with that at home all the time. So like, it's not something that's going to make him cringe. And so I think sometimes it's like creating this safety. And then the second thing I want to comment on is that I know like I refer because this is my life that I have kids and a husband, but realistically, this is for every woman, everyone out there. It doesn't matter if you want kids or don't want kids. If you have kids, it doesn't matter if you're in a relationship or not in a relationship. It, it, it really doesn't matter anything besides the fact that you want to live cyclically because we are the lighthouse. We, if we don't have kids, we are making that change for the other young women watching us for the other people in our workplace watching us, who may be even older than us. We are this lighthouse that can really bring this wisdom that is really innately ingrained in our DNA. Like this isn't us reading a book to figure this out. This is us feeling into something that we already know. This is a remembering in our body. And that's what makes this so special. And I always think back to like, when I was young, my parents did not travel. We did not have the money to go on lavish vacations or go anywhere. We went camping. But I had one aunt who traveled the world and she was my lighthouse. She was my lighthouse that led me to doing all these things that were really scary and outside the box, but I did it because I was curious and I wanted to know more, right? And so we can be that aunt. We can be that social figure. We can be that co-worker or that that um friend's best or our kid's mom who is that lighthouse right like we can be that person that is showing a different way and so when we do this we're not only healing our stuff we are healing generations forward of a lot of ancestral trauma that comes with being feminine that comes with the menstrual cycle that comes with our anatomical parts right? And so when we start to tap into this, we ha we heal back, but we also heal so far forward. And this is the power of this work. Yeah. And I want to just bring this in also, because part of what you were saying sparked this for me. I heard someone say, can you imagine what would happen if men had periods, like how things would be organized? And a lot of my work is around the dark feminine recently and around um, one of the themes I've been talking about in some of my work with that is decentering men and just starting to notice how much we might cater towards men's comfort. And you kind of touched on this, like saying that your husband's employee feels safe with him. Um, and it's so much of the conversation around decentering men is really like prioritizing women's needs. It's not like, oh, we're going to be hating on men or we're going to devalue them. It's just that, no, we're taking the... Um, you know, priority for comfort to an even space. That's it. Yeah. And so understanding like that question, what if it, what if men had periods, how would they be showing up where the world is catered more to them? Um, what would they be bold enough to ask for? How would the workplace be set up? All of these kind of things we can think about, okay, what part of that then can I maybe bring in to sculpt my life, to have that like audacity <laughs> that a man would just expect? you know, mm -hmm. that I can sculpt my life in this way. Um, that could be something to think on as well. So mm -hmm. Kate, do you want to share about your program cyclical? If anyone is like, I want to really learn how I need help to do this tangibly. I want to be in a safe space of women where we can discuss this. I can ask questions with someone who knows what they're talking about. Do you want to just share about that program? Yeah. So cyclical reclaiming you um, is a nine month journey. And I did that intentionally because we're birthing a new you, right? It takes nine months to create a life. We're creating the life that you are desiring. And we're going to do that in this nine months together. And the whole idea, and this, what this really came to me was me feeling so disconnected from my own body, feeling so much self-doubt, feeling so much irritation or anger 
feeling so lost. Like I remember a year and a half ago or two years ago, my natural path saying, well, what brings you joy? And I'm like, me being like, I have no idea. Right. And so there's was this path of me starting to relearn myself and relearn who I wanted to show up with. And part of that is remembering who I thought I was going to be when I was in my teens. You have this vision of the life you're going to have. And then all of a sudden you get all the pieces and you're like, crap, this doesn't feel aligned at all. And it's because we're not operating with alignment of our own cycle. It's not because of the choices we made. It's not because of how our life is set up. It's a lot about relearning what our needs are and how to navigate and move through those. So the cyclical program, we go into eight intensive weeks. We mean just once a week, we're going to meet for eight weeks where we're really going to cover some fundamentals around cyclical living, around understanding and starting to decode your own cycle on how to womb map, to understand your optimal times or how you function within cycles to starting to look at maybe diagnoses that we've had and how we can start to look at those in different light rather than just looking at the medical jargon. Can we look at what the emotion is behind those diagnoses? Looking at how we can advocate for our health, looking at the divine feminine and how it's been kind of removed from our existence and how can we start to incorporate that back in? How can we really start to reclaim who we are in in this process and then after that eight weeks we go into what i call cycle integration which is where we're going to go through once a month and pick a theme or a topic so that we can amplify the work that we did in those eight weeks and so this is where we're going to look at both how to create the well body which is looking at endocrine disruptors looking at nutrition and fitness and starting to look at how we can hormone hack or cycle sync that so that we're really optimizing rather than depleting like letting go of these ideas or jargons or terms that we've been thrown at us or ways that we've been taught to do things and starting to see that actually we feel better when we do these things And then we go into uh, burnout to balance, which is working more on the mental and emotional aspects um, where we'll look at self-care. We'll look at liberating our sexual being, looking at how we can tap into self-care in a way that really does nurture us and balance us rather than it just being this blanket term that we use. And then we go into reclaiming ourself, which is starting to look at some of more of the sacred teachings of the priestesshood and looking at the sacred teachings of the feminine energy and how we can bring that back into our life so that way we are reawakening a part of us that's been dormant, that's been screaming at us or nudging us to, to, to be awake, to be let out so that we can really, the whole idea is really to come into this place where we've been kind of like trying to navigate life and feeling like we're really lost in it to all of a sudden feeling full in our life because we're living it with our, our our system, our cycles in mind. And we look at all cycles. Well, this is where we're really starting to look at how every cycle out there is impacting us and how we can start to really discern and navigate this and find safety in these bigger transitions in life in just what our what how we've set up our life, right? Um, and then part of that too is that um, you get bonuses. You get these amazing bonus bonuses. I give my your uh, sorry, just one second. The healed cycle, the heal cycle course, which talks all about how we can really start to go deeper into making sure that we're caring for our health through understanding our cycle and advocating with our practitioners and having practical tools for menstrual problems. And you'll also get another bonus of having. Um, my other course called Living in Flow, which goes into how to cycle sync and hormone hack your work life, your parenting, and your relationships. So those are like two separate courses that you get in there. And then you get access to everything for a full year. So that way you don't have overwhelm or feel like you have to rush through these bonuses. You have another three months that you can start to tackle those, um, which were modules that I kind of wanted to be part of the program. And then I was like, this is going to get too big and too long. And so then they just got added as little bonuses for everybody instead. So that way, if it calls to you, they're there. And then you have access to me. Like we, each of these Zoom calls that we come on to, we are 
providing information, but then we have a Q&A afterwards where this is one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is where you're going to do it in the group setting of asking your questions and me being able to answer them. There's no more of you trying to fumble through this on your own. We are going to figure this out together. So that way it just feels easeful. It feels like this has been a part of your life that has always been there. Just you haven't tapped into that resource. That sounds so awesome. And I also want to say, um, it's just like the, by us doing this deep work, it, it, and we've talked about this a few times. I just want to reiterate it. It has such an impact on everyone around us, yep. So, but mostly for ourselves. You know, yep. for herself, it changes so much, but then it also is witnessed by other people that will never know we're inspired by it or we're changed by it, or maybe we're triggered by it initially. And then they, sh and then it shifted for them, you know? So yep. thank you, Kate, so much for sharing some of your wisdom around all of this. And you guys, she has, she's so smart <laughs> about this sort of stuff <laughs> before we you. Get I was like, um, I'm going to need some help talking about some of these concepts more around like hormones and that sort of thing. She's really, really educated on all of this. She also, you also have a degree in menstrual health, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Well, I have a certificate. Yeah. So I really like understanding and dissecting things. I need to, my brain, the way it works, I need to know it from the scientific point. I need evidence-based yeah. stuff, but then there's a bigger part of me. And I think this really reawakened in me healing my body of me going but what's the sacredness here? And so I really try to bring in science and the spirituality together to make these teachings tangible so that it's like, it is answering some of our bigger questions, but then it's also getting us to reflect and to look at it in a way that's a little bit different outside the box. And so that we can really feel it to embody it, right? Knowledge is knowledge, but the embodiment of that knowledge is completely different. And that's what I want to help women do is guide them on this path of being able to embody this wisdom that's always been in their womb space. And so just reawaking them to it. And, and that's, that's kind of my mission. And so I like to bring ancient wisdom to the modern body is what I always say. So um, this is a journey about relearning who you are and your needs and rediscovering this life that you can have, right? You can have it all, but there's a way to do it that's not tapping out every resource that you have as well. Like there's a way to do it so that you feel curious, that you feel inspired, that you feel excited about being a woman in the modern world and feeling like you have a voice. And it it really is such a potent and powerful information. The other thing I'd like to add is just that, like you said, that this program cyclical, it is starting at the end of October. If you're watching this currently, we're going to be starting October 29th. So this is a short turnaround to come in, but this is a program that I'm going to be offering yearly. I'll only offer it once a year. So if you miss this one, if you're watching this later in, in life, know that every September, this is where we're going to start to uh, open the doors to this program again and, and launch back into it because we are cyclical creatures and there is, this is a cycle that needs to be nourished and moved slowly through, but it needs to be one that's repeated. So beautiful. Well, I'll have all of Kate's information in the description and in the comments so that you guys can reach out to her if you have any particular questions about any of this stuff. And of course, the sales page so that you can go check out everything for Cyclical and sign up. Um, so thank you so much, Kate, for being here. And you guys, if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment. Let us know what you liked about it. Let us know if you have any specific questions um, that want to be looked at or discussed. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Like the video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.